Hello, in this part we will focus on thread flags, which are called uh, within freer to OS API task notifications. It is very similar to event uh, flags, which we covered in a different part of this training, but this time and the thread flags are not a separate object within freer to OS, but those are included into each task control block. It allows us to directly communicate between tasks. So one task can, uh, let's say, set some bits within those thread flags of another task. So let's create a new uh, project within existing access, uh, let's say, workspace. I would uh, use stm 32 cube ide but you can work with stm 32 cube mx as well. So I start new file new stm 32 project. I will select stm 32 l 476 rg as this is uh, the heart of uh, Nucleo board which we are using within this training. The name of this uh, hands-on would be 8 underscore thread underscore flux. Click finish. And within this exercise, so we need to specify two tasks. One task uh, will wait for some combination of its own thread flux. And then the second task will set part of it. And we will need as well one interrupt, which would set those flags as well. So as you can see, there are a lot of similarities to event flags uh, described uh, in another parts of this session. Uh, so we will start from the interrupt. So this is PC13, the blue button is connected over there. So I configure this line, clicking left uh, button on mouse, and I select uh, GPIO XT13. I can set a label clicking on the right button on pin and uh, I can set this name button. It will be not used in the exercise but uh, just worth to, to always to present how we can do it. Please remember that all of the labels are defined uh, with a main.h file after code generation. Okay, let's continue. So within system core and the sys group, I'm selecting as a debug trace asynchronous SW, so standard SWD, plus SWO, so serial wire output, which is used for single wire tracing. We will use this to send the data from our tasks and interrupts on the on the console within our environment. It's very nice supported the debug tool. Okay. Uh, next uh, point is, let's say, the change of time-based source, which is used for a HAL library. By default, it is Sysstick, but it is good to change it to any other timer, as Sysstick is reserved for freer toys. So I'm changing it to timer 6, as this timer do not have any input nor output channels, so it will be quite natural selection. Then the next point is selection of uh, freer toys. So I go to middleware, freer toys. I select interface uh, CMC's V2 and from this I need to check first whether the task notification has been enabled. I use task notifications, yes, so we can continue. All the API functions within FreeRTOS sources would be available for us. Okay, so as I told you, we need two tasks. I go to tasks and queues, I double click on this default task. I would rename it to task1. Priority normal, uh, stack size 256 words, and uh, function name, I would name it uh, start task 1. And OK. Then I will add one more. So I click add button. I would rename it to task 2. Priority will set to priority normal. 256 bytes, start task to as an entry function, and that's it. We've got all the configurations uh, within FreeRTOS. Let's have a look into the config parameters. And uh, we can see this library max syscall interrupt priority is set to 5. All of the interrupts we would like to use to call operating system functions should be within this range from 5 to 15 in terms of the priority of the interrupt. 
This is due to the fact that the critical sections of an operating system is operating, it's blocking all of the interrupts from this level, so from level 5 down to level 15. Other interrupts, uh, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, can be still executed without any problem. So it is important that once we are in a critical section, there should be no call to operating system functions. This is why all interrupts which are interacting with the operating system should have the priority within this range. So knowing this, I go to NVIC and uh, I'm selecting first enabling this interrupt, external interrupt, and changing this 0 to level 5. After this, I can generate the code. So I click this gear icon. OK, and I can open main.c file and perform further code modifications. As I told you, the task notifications, or let's say the thread flags, uh, do not need any creation of the component within FreeRTOS uh, or CMC OS. Those are parts of existing tasks control blocks. Uh, so we can go directly to our tasks implementation. And uh, as we discussed, the uh, task one will be used to wait for some specific combination of the flags. So I would use OS thread flux wait and then let's say the flux so I would like to wait for example for one then there is only one flux so this option is not uh, let's say that important so I can put a zero over here and the timeout OS wait forever so this is an example how we can wait for the particular let's say combination of the of the flux after this, uh, I would uh, use a sign of life, so task action, as it is uh, task one, I would send one, and uh, that's it. So we need uh, some other task or interrupt uh, to set these thread flags within this task one. In the first part of this hands-on, we will use for this an external interrupt. So I go to core source stm42l4xx underscore it dot c file and uh, I would scroll down to my external interrupt handler and I would reuse um, just opening the declaration I would reuse this callback this callback is called at the end of execution of this uh, external interrupt it is defined as weak uh, doing nothing uh, so I can define it myself in my code so I would copy paste it within part four of this code. And here I would just set those flags. So OS thread thread oh, flux set. And it will be now I need to select which task I would like to set the flags. So it, in our case it is task one. And the flux. Flux, uh, it will be just one. This is the combination of the flux on those uh, the task one is waiting for. After this, we will just send, the, let's say, the sign of life task action and exclamation mark. Okay, we can define as well this task action. So I would use. ITM interface to do this as we de declared this uh, additional line serial wire output. So for this, I would use ITM send char and it will be message. And the second line and it will be, let's say, sign of new line. Okay, the missing point is, of course, the declaration of this function. When this private function prototypes part, the user code, and now we are ready to compile the code. And uh, what is an expected result? An expected result is the, the following. Task 1 will be blocked, waiting for this, uh, its own flux set to 1. And... Uh, 
until we'll press the button, nothing will, should be pre visible within the, let's say, the data console. Once we press the button, we should see first an exclamation mark, and then we should see this task, uh, the, the, the one, which is the task action from task one, because this task would be unblocked for, let's say, the single occurrence of this um, flux combination. After this, uh, let's say, task will receive this combination of desired, desired combination of the flux. In this case, it's on the one, one bit. It will be cleared automatically. It is specified within this second argument and it will wait again for the next button press. So let's compile the code and check whether this is uh, working like we are expecting. OK, code is compiled. Let's uh, click on this bug icon. I go to the debugger. I'm enabling serial wire viewer. And I'm changing the core clock to 4 MHz, which is the case of our application. Then I need to display our ITM data console. In case you do not see it, uh, please uh, go to the quick access and press SWV and select the line with this monitor icon. Once it is done, please uh, activate it and configure. To configure it, we need to press this configure trace button. Select zero within ITM stimulus ports, which is our SWO line. And we need to press this icon, which is start tracing. After this, we can start our application. And as you can see, there is nothing as expected because task one, uh, let me let me go to the code once again. Task one is waiting for the code uh, for, let's say, this, uh, those flags. And uh, there is no button press which could send it. So I press the button. And I can see that there was, let's say, a single occurrence of the button press of the interrupt. This is this exclamation mark. And after, as it has, uh, let's say, caused uh, se setting the, let's say, the thread flux of task one, it is unblocking uh, for a single, let's say, execution task one as well. This is why we can see this one afterwards. If I press button once again, I can see uh, more pairs like this. So one button press and a single occurrence of exclamation mark and one, which is a single uh, activation of task, uh, task one. This is the first exercise. In our second part, uh, we will work on a combination of the flags and the part of it would be set from the interrupt, like now, and that the rest will be set uh, from the different task. So let's uh, terminate our debug session and continue with the coding. OK, so let's do some modifications to have, let's say, more extended example. We will not touch this callback, so in this exercise, in this part, um, our external interrupt will set one within, let's say, task one thread flux, and it will send its sign of life, which is an exclamation mark. So there is no change. We will change uh, the function body of entry code for task one. So this time we will wait for 51 hexadecimal. So as you can see, we need uh, to set this missing 50 hexadecimal as, uh, let's say, the thread flags are ORed together from different sources. And we would specify as well one of the flags, or the flags combinations, telling that uh, we would like to wait uh, for all of the flags. So uh, for this, we've got OS flux wait all. If you are not sure uh, what you should specify within this part, you can go to the definition of this function. So it is within source cmc's artos v2 in middleware and uh, cmc's underscore os dot os two dot c file. If we if we find this this function, we can see that we've got in fact two flux. OS flux no clear, which is uh, in fact two and OS flex uh, wait all, which is one. No clear means that after success execution of this function, so once uh, all the desired flux will come, the flux will be not cleared within the control block of the task, which is operating on those uh, bits. Usually we would like to clear them, so this is the default action, but in any case uh, we can set that it should not be done. 
Then OS flex wait all means that um, we uh, would like uh, to wait for all of the flags specified within this function. If both flags are not specified, so the second argument is zero, like in the previous exercise, all the flags will be cleared. If any flags, any of the bits within the thread flags uh, will come. So in case of 51, any of the bits from this 51 would be set. It will unblock this function and clear all the flags within the control block of the task we are working on. So in our case, we will use OS flags wait all and we will not use this option. So this is why I select this argument and OS wait forever. Then the sign of life of our task one, no change. And we will we will add some code within task two. Within task two, we will do similar operation like uh, from our interrupt, but in this case, we will set 50 hexadecimal. And of course, our task action would be two instead of an exclamation mark. And uh, we will put some delay afterwards. So we will send our task for three seconds into the blocked state. Let's try to compile it and uh, check whether it will work like expected. As you can see at the moment, we should see once per three seconds two on our, let's say, terminal, as it would be the only active task once per three seconds. This one would be blocked because uh, task one will wait uh, for the combination of uh, uh, thread flux uh, uh, 50 hexadecimal and one coming from interrupt. And uh, till we will have, let's say, button press setting one within the thread flux and 50 hexadecimal there would be no action from our task one. Let's compile it. Okay, there is no errors, no warnings. So this is the time to start a debug session. I press, uh, let's say the debug icon. My board is already connected. Okay, so as uh, it is, uh, let's say we already configured the ITM interface and the data console from a single wire viewer. I would just switch it to be active window and I start tracing and I run my application. So now I can see once per three second activation of task two as expected. There is no action from task one as it is blocked waiting for the combination of the flags set by task two and external interrupt. Now I'm pressing the blue button which is causing this external interrupt occurrence. And now I can see that there was an exclamation mark informing us that there was uh, the callback from raised by the by the interrupt and single occurrence of task one. As we have not specified no clear afterwards, this function will clear all the flags within the control block of this task one and it will wait for the next button press. So let's do a small modification and we will add one more flag within this OS thread flags wait for task one. So let's uh, switch off the debug part. Okay, and uh, within our task one, let me come back to this code. I would add this flag, OS flex no clear. So come back to main and we can concatenate those flags together using the OR button, let's see the OR, or sign. And uh, now we'll wait for all of the flags and we will not clear them. So now I would build the code once again. And I will start a debug session. Data console, start tracing and run. So no button press. So once per three seconds, I can see these uh, actions from task two only. Now I press the button. And now what we can see, we can see that both tasks, task one and task two are activated regularly. So the flux has not been cleared after this. And now let's say both tasks can be, let's say executed, executed regularly. So this is, this is the difference. That's all for this uh, part. Thank you for watching this video.